What is up guys, it's ya boy Rick. Due to an issue, we've disabled Telesto again, Cacus here. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel and let me know what you think my next intro should be. That comment section, it's, it's out of control. All right, today we are gonna be showcasing five exotic weapons that are getting a lot better coming on December 7th with the 30th anniversary update for Destiny 2. Now that's because this update isn't just introducing a new dungeon and the Galahorn quest, but it also has a massive sandbox update. And recently Bungie actually revealed all of the different weapon buffs and nerfs coming with this update. I've done a video on that by the way, check it out if you haven't. But 14 exotic weapons are being buffed or nerfed, so in this video we're going over the 5 that are likely to make the biggest impact on the meta. So if you don't have any of these weapons, definitely acquire them. If you do, make sure they're infused up to a good light level and make sure you do the catalyst for these weapons as well. And so Let's get started here in no particular order with number 5, and that's gotta be the Arbalest Linear Fusion Rifle. Because what they're doing to this thing is insane, like this will likely become a huge part in the PvE meta because they're giving it intrinsic anti-barrier rounds. So just like the Ariana's Vow, this, with no mods, is gonna be able to deal with barrier champions. And I mean, Linear Fusion Rifles are exactly what you want to be using in activities with champions, such as Grandmasters. But right now the only anti-barrier rounds mod we have is for auto rifles. Guys, there are so many different activities. For example, just now with the Proving Grounds, one of the hardest strikes in the game being featured as the Grandmaster, you, you really didn't want to be shooting uh, the barrier champions from across the map with a rinky-dink auto rifle. You would much rather have the Arbalest because, and this is getting even crazier guys, another buff they're doing, as you can see, is increasing the PvE damage of linear fusion rifles by 10%. So this should also apply to the Arbalest. So it's going to let you run the Arbalest in that kinetic slot, whatever primary weapon you want, and then a heavy linear fusion like the Reed's Regret or the Threaded Needle, both of which are fantastic, have that to deal with unstoppables, have the Arbalest to deal with the barriers, and you're good to go. And then Particle Deconstruction is gonna work for both of them. Not to mention the Arbalest might actually surpass the Ariana's Vow as the best intrinsic anti-barrier weapon because it also has disruption break where breaking a shield and that counts for champion shields is going to make kinetic weapons itself deal 75 percent more damage to that target that's insane so yeah expect this thing to get used a lot in nightfalls but moving on from there the next weapon on our list has got to be the whisper of the worm this thing was Infamous when it first came out was by far the best heavy weapon in the game It's since fallen out of favor and really hasn't seen too much play But what Bungie is doing to it is firstly they reduced the delay on activating whispered breathing uh, in the catalyst from 2.1 down to 1.2 seconds So if you're trying to get max DPS with this thing you have to ADS well, right now, for 2.1 seconds before you activate Whispered Breathing, and that's going to increase the damage of all your consecutive shots as long as you continue aiming down sights. Making it activate essentially a second sooner is going to give you a second more of damage, like in a damage phase. That's a big deal. But they're also changing how the White Nail perk works. Right now, if you land three precision shots, you instantly reload the magazine, but all three rounds come from your actual ammo inventory. But now, only two rounds are gonna come from your inventory, and one round is gonna appear out of thin air. So like right now, if you have nine rounds, that's the max you can shoot in a row. But now, if you have nine rounds, you can shoot 12 rounds in a row. That is a huge difference. So essentially, you're gonna get a 33% increase in the amount of rounds you can shoot with the Whisper of the Worm in a row. And also, if that wasn't enough, they're just straight up increasing its PvE damage by 10%. So it's gonna get to its max damage faster, it's gonna be significantly more ammo efficient, 
and it just does more damage. That is a lot of changes, so again, expect the Whisper of the Worm to start seeing more play. Moving on from there, weapon number three, this might surprise you, but it's actually the Suros Regime Exotic Auto Rifle. Now, I had to include this thing because, guys, I think Bungie might have a listening device in my house because I swear, during Proving Grounds, when we were developing our loadouts, we needed some auto rifles to deal with the barrier champions. And we had a teammate that was using a legendary fusion rifle, and then they could just use an incredible legendary heavy linear fusion rifle, again, like the Reed's Regret, Threaded Needle, so we had space for an exotic. We were thinking, well, is there any good exotic auto rifle you could use? And we kind of thought about it and I said, oh, what about the Suros regime? You could put it into the slow firing mode and pick off those champions from a ways away. And my teammate went, no, remember, it doesn't add any range. It just increases the damage. And I went, ah, you're right. If it did add range, this would definitely be the choice. And we all went, yup. And then out of nowhere, a couple of days later, Bungie drops this. The dual mode receiver mode now grants the following in addition to its current effects, plus 30 range and plus three zoom. So right now, everyone, when they're using the Suros, just uses the spinning up mode that increases the rate of fire over time. Now, I think you're gonna have a lot bigger reason to use that secondary mode. It's gonna increase damage, it is gonna lower your rate of fire, but now, plus 30 range? That's insane. Iron Reach is like a game-changing perk, and that gives plus 20 range, and completely destroys your stability, I think, right? So this is going to make the Soros regime capable at those extremely long ranges. And again, because the only anti-barrier round we have right now is for auto rifles, if you have room for an exotic in your loadout, the Suros regime just became a legitimate option, getting that massive range increase now, but don't forget, it also has the rounds in the bottom half of the magazine deal more damage, which is great, and it heals you for getting kills most of the time, which is also fantastic. There's a lot of benefits to using the Suros regime. So again, I would expect it to start to pop up in a few more loadouts for dealing with those barrier champions. But moving on from their weapon, number four has got to be the Cryostesia 77K. Now this thing right now is pretty trash, and Bungie actually admits that they made it underpowered kind of on purpose because it was released at a time that Stasis was running rampant in PvP. So now that the meta has kind of settled, they can come back and give this weapon the power it deserves. And they're doing a lot. They're removing the variable trigger. Right now it fires when you release the trigger, which definitely makes it feel, I mean, feel a bit weird to use, but they're also moving the charged shot to a special reload. So all you have to do is get a final blow and then reload the sidearm to get access to this. And once the charged shot is fired, the magazine just reverts back to normal instead of removing the entire magazine's ammo. So now you just get a final blow, charge shot, shoot. Start shooting normally, get another final blow, do the special reload, charge shot, go back to normal. I feel like that is going to be a lot more user friendly and just more intuitive to use than it is right now. But the biggest change guys, like by far and why this is on the list, is that the charge shot now causes an AOE, which freezes AI and slows players, but direct hits still freeze. So right now, you don't have an AOE. It is just all or nothing direct hit. So you have one chance to freeze one enemy in PvE. Changing that to AOE is just insane. It means you can shoot the ground and anyone within that area in PvE is going to instantly freeze. Guys, we have seen how unbelievably powerful an AOE freeze effect is with the Aegir's Scepter. That thing causes AOE freeze and it's just insane. Like that thing's being used in Grandmasters. It is so good at crowd control. So giving a primary weapon this effect, I don't know how big the AOE is going to be, but if it's even, you know, half as much as the Scepter, this could be a serious stasis enabler in PvE because 
Again, you now have access to all of these different fragments and aspects that benefit from using a stasis weapon. You can cause enemies to freeze and then there's a fragment that's going to increase the size of that explosion when you kill that enemy. So it's going to be incredible for ad control. Heck, you can now start to get stasis shards from using the Kraustegia so much more efficiently, which are a huge part of stasis builds. I really think this thing is going to be really powerful after this buff. But moving on from there, guys, weapon number five, it's got to be the Sleeper Simulant. So this thing already is quite good. Like, again, one of my teammates used it to beat the Proving Grounds Grandmaster and liked it. It's maybe not as efficient as, you know, for example, the Reed's Regret when you incorporate Triple Tap. If you're activating that consistently, it might edge it out, but it still hits like a truck. But it's going to hit even harder because what they're doing is they're going to increase the magazine size from 3 to 4 and increase the PvE damage by 6%. And remember that also includes the 10% linear fusion damage buff that we talked about earlier with the Arbalest. So essentially, this thing, which is all, like guys, I did damage tests where I put the Sleeper Simulant against the 1k voices and the Sleeper Simulant melted the Templar within Vault of Glass just a couple seconds later than the 1k. And the 1k is like the absolute meta weapon of choice when it comes to boss melting. Sleeper Simulant was never that far behind, but now it's going to hit 16% harder and that magazine size increase that makes a huge difference. Like, the biggest downside of this weapon by far was only having three rounds in the magazine. You would have to reload a considerable amount of times when you were in a boss DPS phase. But now, a whole extra round is going to make a world of difference. Because, let me put it into this perspective. Now you're going to be able to shoot four rounds, reload, and do another four rounds for eight rounds total. Before, you'd have to do three rounds, reload, another three rounds, you're at six, another reload, and then two rounds of that last magazine to get to eight rounds. So you're eliminating an entire reload step, which by the way, the reload stat on the sleeper, not the best. So that is really, again, going to substantially increase its DPS output. Especially right now where particle deconstruction just has a stranglehold over the PvE meta, this, I think, is going to become a much better option, especially if you don't have an utter god roll legendary linear. Like, if you have a Reed's Regret, but it doesn't have, you know, Vorpal or Firing Line, or it doesn't have Triple Tap, use the Sleeper. If you have, for example, just a little bit of an underwhelming Threaded Needle, maybe you don't have the right battery perk, again, it's going to become a lot more favorable to use the sleeper, which is just going to be incredibly consistent. It's the same for everyone rather than, you know, a four out of five or an almost god roll legendary. In any event, guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.